In this video, I'm going to discuss different heart murmurs and then provide you with clues on how to distinguish different heart murmurs on the exam, discuss the phenomenon of normal splitting seen with the S2 heart sounds, and then discuss the anatomical heart defects that are associated with wide splitting, paradoxical splitting, as well as fixed splitting, and then finally, discuss the expected blood pressure in different chambers of the heart, and then go over the memory aid that I've provided you here to help you with its memorization. So starting with different heart murmurs, usually you should know that the information in the question can help you with distinguishing the type of heart murmur that you're dealing with. For instance, if they give you a scenario where there is an elderly patient that passes out during exertion, like for instance when the patient was climbing the stairs, then that should give you clues to the diagnosis of aortic stenosis. On the other hand, if in the question stem you see that there is a wide pulse pressure, let's say for instance that the systolic blood pressure is 170 while the diastolic blood pressure is 60 then that should give you clues to aortic regurgitation so what I'm saying here is that usually the information in the question give you clues on the type of heart murmur you're dealing with but then if you want to exactly pinpoint that murmur that you're dealing with there are two important facts you have to be familiar with one the location of the murmur in which of these four points is the murmur loudest and then finally whether the murmur is diastolic or systolic now with the location of the murmurs if you have difficulty memorizing where each of these valves are located just imagine the location of the heart here so what happens with the aorta is that it will initially ascend and then later on will descend into the abdomen so therefore the aortic murmurs like aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation are best heard in the right upper sternal border versus the pulmonic valves which are best heard in the left sternal border left upper sternal border now here we have the right atrium right ventricle left atrium and then left ventricle so the tricuspid um, heart murmurs are best heard in the left lower sternal border which is shown right here in a green circle and then the mitral heart sounds like mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation are best heard at the apex of the heart which is located between the left atrium and the left ventricle and then finally with the atrial septal defects since it's between the right atrium and the left atrium it's best heard in the left upper sternal border versus the atrial uh, versus the ventricular septal defects which, which is between the right ventricle and left ventricle and thus it's best heard in the left lower sternal border so i would like to repeat atrial septal defects is in the left upper sternal border while the um, ventricular septal defect is best heard in the left lower sternal border now as for the type of the diastolic or systolic murmurs that we are dealing with here i've provided you with a memory aid to know which murmurs are diastolic and which murmurs are systolic so all you will, ha you will have to memorize is arms and parts so aortic regurgitation mitral stenosis pulmonary regurgitation as well as tricuspid stenosis all of these are diastolic heart murmurs and then with the systolic heart murmurs all you will have to do is this is to swap r with s so aortic stenosis mitral regurgitation pulmonary stenosis as well as tricuspid regurgitation these are the ones that are systolic heart murmurs so with the diastolic heart murmurs aortic regurgitation mitral stenosis pulmonary regurgitation tricuspid stenosis these are all diastolic versus systolic for which you will have to swap s and r position so that's one important memory aid that you will have to be familiar with and then with the uh, location of different heart murmurs then that's really easy to pinpoint the type of murmurs we are dealing with now with the normal heart sound there are two different components one is the s1 heart sound which corresponds to the closure of the mitral as well as the tricuspid heart walls so this would correspond to the S1 murmur. So S1 murmur is composed of the tricuspid and mitral valve closure, while S2 heart sound is associated with the closure of the aortic and pulmonic heart valves. Now given that S2 is made of aortic and pulmonic, sometimes it's referred to as A2 
for its aortic component and P2 for its pulmonic component. During expiration, the A2 and P2 are so close to each other that you cannot distinguish them. However, during inspiration, since there is more blood that will go to the right side of the heart, it takes longer for the P2 valve to close and that's the timing between the A2 and P2 increase and that's the time that you will hear this splitting sound and this is referred to as normal splitting. So here normal splitting pulmonary valve closes later than the aortic valve during inspiration and that's the time you will hear the normal splitting. So during the expiration A2 and P2 are so close to each other that you cannot distinguish them from each other and thus all you will hear is a sound of the S2 heart sound. However, when the patient inspires, then the distance between the P2 and A2 increases as a consequence of which now you can hear the splitting phenomenon. Now what happens if there is pulmonary stenosis? At that point, there is, it takes longer for the pulmonary valve to close because there is too much pressure behind the valve and so therefore the uh, distance between the A2 and P2 increase, particularly during inspiration. So compared to the normal heart valve, you can see that there is a wide distance between the A2 and P2 and this is referred to